In this video, Naval Goddard will discuss one of the most powerful topics in the law of attraction field, which is how to precisely manifest and obtain whatever you desire in life, or how to ensure your manifestation in the simplest and most direct way possible. Are there any fields of your life where you feel you are not living up to your full potential, such as your relationships, finances, career, or health? Did you notice that you're just now drawing into your world whatever you're conscious of being? So in order for your dreams to become a reality in your life, you must enter a brand new state of consciousness that corresponds to having your desire rather than your current state of consciousness that corresponds to not having your desire. Life doesn't care if you consider yourself wealthy or poor, strong or weak. It will eternally reward you with whatever you claim to be true about yourself. From my perspective, Naval's approach was quite unique. First and foremost, his approach was revolutionary. As a result, he asserted that anyone can attract or manifest whatever they truly desire using only their imagination. That's right. He truly believed that anything you could imagine or visualize could become a reality. Second, Naval's approach was quite unique in that he spoke about the Bible in a slightly unconventional or to put it in another way, not the usual way that everyone goes for. Nonetheless, he was a staunch supporter of Christianity and its teachings, as proven by his lectures. He incorporated Bible doctrine into his own teachings, but only with his own personal twist. The beauty of manifesting is that it takes care of all of the details. You are not required to imagine how your wish will come true. All you have to do is visualize the desired result. As you may have noticed, all of Naval's approaches have one thing in common. They use imagery and rely on the power of the mind. Although the procedures are not identical, they're very similar due to their shared concept. It is best to try several of them rather than just one. Before we continue, let's let Naval speak for himself. If you enjoy videos like these, make sure to click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to pay close attention. Enjoy. I want to show you today how to put your wonderful imagination right into the feeling of your wish fulfilled and let it remain there and fall asleep in that state. And I promise you from my own experience, you will realize the state in which you sleep if you could actually feel yourself right into the situation of your fulfilled desire and continue therein until you fall asleep. As you feel yourself right into it, remain in it until you give it all the tones of reality, until you give it all the sensory vividness of reality. As you do it, in that state, quietly fall into sleep. And in a way you will never know but never consciously devise the means that would be employed, you will find yourself moving across a series of events leading you towards the objective realization of this state. Now here is a practical technique. The first thing you do, you must know exactly what you want in this world. When you know exactly what you want, make as lifelike a representation as possible of what you would see and what you would touch and what you would do and physically moving in such a state. For example, suppose I wanted a home, but I had no money, but I still know what I want. I, without taking anything into consideration, I would make as lifelike a representation of the home that I would like, with all the things in it that I would want. And then, this night, as I would go to bed, I would, in a state, a drowsy, sleepy state, the state that borders upon sleep. I would imagine that I am actually in such a house, that were I to step off the bed, I would step upon the floor of that house. Were I to leave this room, I would enter the room that is adjacent to my imagined room in that house. And while I am touching the furniture and feeling it to be solid and real, and while I am moving from one room to the other in my imaginary house, I would go sound asleep in that state. And I know that in a way I could not consciously devise, I would realize my house. I have seen it work time and time again. If I wanted promotion in my business, I would ask myself what additional responsibilities would be mine were I to be given this great promotion. What would I do? What would I say? What would I see? How would I act? And then in my imagination, 
I will begin to see and touch and do and act as I would outwardly see and touch and act were I in that position. If I now desired the mate of my life, were I now in search of some wonderful girl or some wonderful man, what would I actually find myself doing that would imply that I have found my state? For instance, suppose now I was a lady. One thing I would definitely do, I would wear a wedding ring. I would take my imaginary hand and I would feel the ring that I would imagine to be there. And I would keep on feeling it and feeling it until it seemed to me to be solidly real. I would give it all the sensory vividness I am capable of giving anything. And while I am feeling my imaginary ring, which implies I am married, I would sleep. This story is told us in the Song of Song, or the Song of Song. It is said at night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loved. I found him whom my soul loved. And I would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house, right into the chamber of her that conceived. If I would take that beautiful poem and put it into modern English, into practical language, it would be this. While sitting in my chair, I would feel myself right into the situation of my fulfilled desire. And having felt myself into that state, I would not let it go. I would keep that mood alive. And in that mood, I would sleep. That is, take it right into my mother's chamber, into the chamber of her that conceived. You know, people are totally unaware of this fantastic power of the imagination. But when man begins to discover this power within him, he never plays the part that he formerly did. He doesn't turn back and become just a reflective one. From here on in, he is the affect of it. The secret of it is to center your imagination in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and remain there. For in our capacity to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled lies our capacity to live the more abundant life. Most of us are afraid to imagine ourselves as important and noble individuals, secure in our contribution to the world, just because at the very moment that we start our assumption, reason and our senses deny the truth of our assumption. We seem to be in the grip of an unconscious urge which makes us cling desperately to the world of familiar things and resist all that threatens to tear us away from our familiar and seemingly safe mores. Well, I appeal to you to try it. If you try it, you will discover this great wisdom of the ancients, for they told it to us in their own strange, wonderful, symbolical form. But unfortunately, you and I misinterpreted their story and took it for history when they intended it as instruction to simply achieve our every objective. You see, imagination puts us inwardly in touch with a world of states. These states are existent, they are present now, but they are mere possibilities while we think of them. But they become overpoweringly real when we think from them and dwell in them. You know, there's a wide difference between thinking of what you want in this world and thinking from what you want. Let me tell you, when I first heard of the strange and wonderful power of the imagination, it was in 1933 in New York City. An old friend of mine taught it to me. He turned to the 14th of John, and this is what he read. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am, there ye may be also. He explained to me that this central character of the gospel was human imagination, that mansion was not a place in some heavenly house, but simply my desire. If I would make a living representation of the state desired, and then enter that state and abide in that state, I would realize. At the time, I wanted to make a trip to the island of Barbados in the West Indies, but I had no money. He explained to me 
if I would that night, as I slept in New York City, assume that I was sleeping in my earthly father's house in Barbados, and go sound to sleep in that state, that I would realize my trip. Well, I took him at his word and tried. For one month, night after night, as I fell asleep, I assumed I was sleeping in my father's home in Barbados. At the end of my month, an invitation from my family came, inviting me to spend the winter in Barbados. I sailed for Barbados the early part of December of that year. From then on, I knew I had found this savior in myself. The old man told me that it would never fail. Even after it happened, I could hardly believe that it would not have happened anyway. That's how strange this whole thing is.